Right. <laughs> Maybe they have access to some other entangled states, which is, let's say, approximately this one. Okay. Then, of course, your intuition tells you that then what they get at the end is also approximately the initial states. Okay. So, how do you go about quantifying that? Well, this is not difficult. So, in general, you can use, let's say, the fidelity between the output density matrix and the initial uh, input states. You compute that, and that gives you an idea how good. Uh, this teleportation protocol works, okay? But of course, it's also important to understand that you should not do this for just one specific pure state, right? Because it could just, by chance, that you do it extremely well. So in fact, you should be doing that, uh, averaging this over all possible pure states, okay? So naturally, that leads to this quantity called this teleportation fidelity, which is basically an average over this fidelity over all possible choices of pure states chosen uniformly, randomly uh, from all possible pure states and also averaging over the uh, measurement outcomes of the value states and so on. Okay, so that gives us a handle to uh, think about uh, this shared state when we wanted to use that as a resource for performing teleportation, uh, how good it is doing its job. Okay, so in the extreme scenario, you can imagine that Alice and Bob, maybe they don't even share entanglement. Okay then uh, maybe they share some separable states. And in fact, if they only share separable states, then they might as well uh, not share anything because with LCC, they can just prepare that from scratch, right? So in this case, what they could actually do, for example, is the following. So they could, for example, agree on a, a strategy beforehand that Alice would perform measurements on this unknown state in some fixed basis, for example, in the zero one basis, and then communicate this measurement outcome to Bob Okay, and then Bob would try to reconstruct the states based on this classical information uh, that he knows. Okay, meaning measurement this basis and also the measurement outcome. Right, then of course, if this choice again happens to coincide, or maybe if one of this is close to this, then again, you can expect that this is going to be very similar to this unknown state to be teleported. But again, the same story, the same argument applies. We should not be considering this over specific pure states, but you should be considering this. Uh, on the average, okay? And then um, in this case, uh, it was shown back in 1994 by Sandu Popescu that if you consider in this, this uh, prepare, sorry, measure and prepare strategies, then for qubits, this average fidelity is limited, is upper bounded by two thirds, okay? Um, and in the more general case, if you're interested in teleporting higher dimensional quantum states, then um, it was shown later by the Horodetskis that this is still limited, uh, and it's limited by two, uh, the other by d plus one, where d is the dimension of the uh, Hilbert space, okay, local Hilbert space. Okay, so, um, right. So just um, for the rest of this talk, I'll be using this terminology. I'll say that if, if you give me a state, a density matrix, and if I evaluate this teleportation vitality, and if it actually beats this classical threshold, I'll say that's useful for teleportation, but otherwise I'll say that it's useless. Okay, so a priori, it might seem like a difficult thing to, to do if I just give you this density matrix, you need to compute this integral. But then it turns out that uh, in, in 1999, um, the Horodetsky showed that, well, actually this quantity is something that uh, is linearly related to this other quantity that's called fully entangled fractions. And this is a lot easier to compute. And what is it is basically just the expectation value of this uh, density matrix respect to uh, maximally entangles it to qubit states. So you just need to optimize over the local choice of basis for all possible uh, maximally entangled two qubit states. And the one that gives you the largest number is the fully entangled fractions. Okay, so this quantity then basically tells you how good it is uh, in the task of teleportations. Okay, so in this terminology, then it is useful whenever uh, this inequality holds, all right? Okay, so I think it's kind of interesting to realize that even before this was figured out, um, this connection was, was uh, discovered, it was also pointed out by the Horodeskis back in 1996 that there were some two qubit entangled states that are, I mean, they are entangled, but they're actually useless for teleportations, okay? So later on, it was shown uh, also by the Horodeskis that all bound entangled states are useless for teleportations, Okay, meaning that all those states 
that are entangled, but it's not possible to distill uh, maximal entangled two qubits out of that. That you use this for teleportations, okay? But I mean, always not lots. And in fact, uh, it was also found that uh, uh, in year 2000, I mean, uh, some of these uh, co-authors here also the Horodeskis. Some users and tangle states were, uh, I mean, it's possible to, to, to get their teleportation power activated, okay, by means of uh, local filtering operations. I mean, you heard in the last talk that filtering could be useful, for instance. So let me try to explain uh, to you schematically what I mean by this. So imagine that Alice and Bob share some entangled states that are useless, okay, again, according to this criteria. And you could imagine that you now allow Alice to perform some local operations on uh, her half of the subsystem and same thing for Bob, okay? And um, I mean, this could be, for instance, if you're thinking about this as photons, this could be polarizers, for instance, such that in, in one run of the experiments, maybe this actually, the photon goes through here, survives, but the photons actually fails to survive in this, in, in this, in this part here, okay? But for exactly the same filters, it could be that in another round of the experiments, um, they both survive, okay? So, and it turns out that if you make good choice of the filters, then in some instances, you could actually end up with uh, quantum states such that um, they actually become useful after, uh, after this uh, operations, okay? Again, in the sense that uh, up to normalizations, the, the filter states can be written as such. So A and B are just matrices acting on the uh, uh, local subsystems, okay? I mean, they could be representing uh, polarizers, whatever, okay? So again, useful in the sense that afterwards, uh, this is true, right? Sorry. So what do we know? Okay, sorry. Before that, I should also remind that. So what this really means, again, back in, in, in this picture, is that then you can take this state that survives the filtering operations into the usual teleportation protocol, perform the experiments, you find that the average teleportation fidelity should go above this. Okay. So following the uh, terminology in the literatures, we'll refer to this phenomenon as a situation uh, of quantum states having hidden teleportation power in the sense that the teleportation power can be activated, meaning that initially you have a situation like this, but you perform local filtering and condition on successful filtering, then you end up with a quantum state that actually beats the classical threshold. So what do we know about uh, quantum states having hidden teleportation power or not, okay? So it was shown in 2003 that all two qubit entangled states, they are either already useful for teleportations or their teleportation powers can be activated. So this was known back in 2003. Okay, it's also known that bound entangled states have no teleportation power, and also this teleportation power cannot be activated. Yes? Correct, correct. I mean, at least you should have it being non-zero. Yes, this is, this is going to be related to a point that I, I would mention shortly. Thanks. Um, then it was also known that uh, entangled isotropic states, so a, a well-known family of two qubit states, uh, if, if they are entangled, then they are useful for teleportations. Okay. So at this point, a natural question arises, which is that, um, do we know of any, let's say, uh, examples of higher dimensional quantum states that are useless, but can be activated? Okay. So here, this cannot be activated. These are already useful. Okay, so are there examples of high dimensional quantum states that are useless initially but can be activated? And that's what I'm going to tell you today. Okay, so in particular for all dimensions um, larger than or equal to three, if you take entangled Werner states, then you can show that uh, you can find some interval of these states that exhibits hidden teleportation power. Okay, so, so for those who are more into the details, the uh, Werner states actually take this form they are convex mixtures of projector onto the symmetric subspace and the anti-symmetric subspace. So V here is just the swap operator. It swaps the two Hilbert spaces. Okay, so for any dimension D, this is actually a, a one parameter family of states. So I can uh, symbolically represent it using this number line. So in particular, halfway point here is the interesting point because over here we have the Werner states being entangled and over here, the Werner states are separable. Okay, and um, 
it turns out that when we look into this, it turns out that um, for all dimensions uh, greater than two, the entangled vertices are useless for teleportations. So you, you might have expected that at least some of these are useful, but it turns out that they are all useless. Sorry, uh, let me go back to the last slides. They're actually all useless. So um, this is not too difficult to show. In fact, uh, there was a paper back in 2010 uh, by Zhao and collaborators where they worked out already the uh, fully entangled fractions of Werner states. Okay, but maybe they didn't realize exactly that um, all these uh, states um, are actually useless for teleportations. Okay, they did make the comments that some entangled Werner states are useless. Okay, but they maybe they just somehow missed that. Um, it's actually, I mean, the, this entire region here, they are useless. For all dimension three and above, they are actually useless. Okay. And of course, that gives us the natural candidate for our questions. And in, in fact, uh, if you take these filters, which is a kind of strange filters, if you think about that, it's a qubit filters. So you do filtering uh, on Alice subsystems to some qubit uh, Hilbert space, subspace. Same thing on Bob's, okay? And if you do these calculations to work out the filter states, condition on successful filtering, and more, if you allow yourself this additional uh, change in basis, or, uh, if, uh, let's say sigma z on Alice side and sigma x on Bob's side, then you can do the calculation and you can check that you end up with this two qubit isotropic states. Okay, so in particular here, this is a normalization constant. Okay, so uh, the success probability here is not zero. Okay, so at, at the end, I decided to remove the expression for the success probability here. Because I, I was thinking it doesn't, you don't gain much from that. But rather, what I would like you to focus on is the following. Okay, so we wanted to know whether it shows uh, or whether the teleportation power can be activated. So that means that we need to check the fully entangled fractions of the filter states. Okay, so here there seem to be two possibilities because the filter state is a two qubit state. I mean, of course, you can also think about that as a two qubit state encoded in a two qubit space. Okay, so there are two possibilities here that you can think about. So one would be to say that, well, let me compute the d-dimensional fully entangled fractions, and then you end up with these expressions. All the two-dimensional fully entangled fractions end up with these expressions. But in either case, you have to compare that against the classical threshold. So in this case, this should be larger than one over d. This should be larger than one over two. Okay, operationally, maybe you can think about it as this is a criterion that you need to uh, beat if you wanted. Uh, to use it to teleport qubit states. This is what you need to beat if you want it to teleport qubit states. Okay, and you, you can do some simple calculations. You'll find that in both instances, they end up with the same uh, answers in terms of the range of parameters to show usefulness. Okay, so let me therefore put again everything back in this line. Okay, so what we have found therefore is that over here, this rate region here, uh, you have for all dimensions d greater than two, all these entangled uh, Werner states, they were initially useless, but their teleportation power can be activated. Okay. The other, the other point that is maybe worth noting here is that the, uh, this, this uh, critical value here is a quantity that actually decreases with d. Okay. But even in the limit of d going to infinity, this doesn't go all the way to zero, but rather it, it stays at a quarter. So, which means that really in all dimensions, you have always a finite interval of these Werner states that were initially useless, but whose teleportation power can be activated. But on the other hand, you will say that, okay, well, this is good, but maybe this is not uh, entirely satisfactory because you still have something here that you cannot activate. Okay, do I have another examples where we can always show the activations? Uh, yes, we do. So think about this family of two qubit uh, quantum states. Again, these are mixtures of two qubit maximally entangled states and these product states. Okay, so we could show that uh, the uh, this quantum state is either already useful for teleportations or the teleportation power can be activated. Okay, for all this entire interval. Okay, I'll come back to this shortly. But let me make a few other remarks that are relevant to this state. So firstly, it is entangled. For all this, uh, for for all q in this interval, and secondly, um, this results that we have here actually recovers uh, an old results from the Horodetsky's uh, for the qubit case and for q larger than or equals one third. Okay, and the other interesting to note 
about these states is that it was also pointed out in a paper by the Horodetskis that if you consider these diagonal filters, uh, this family of diagonal filters parametrized by n, and if you take the limit of n going to infinity, then you can quasi-distill this to the maximally entangled two qubit states, okay? I mean, why do I say quasi-distill rather than distill? Because exactly uh, a point related uh, to the gentleman over there. Because in, in this case, the success probability when you take the limit of n going to infinity is also going to zero, okay? So this is useful in theory, but in practice is not relevant, okay? Because you want to go into the lab, do this and get it done and rather than waiting forever and it's never done, okay? Because the success probability is zero, okay? So what did we find for this state? Well, it turns out that um, for all D, okay, the state is already useful for teleportation whenever Q is larger than one over D. This is kind of easy to see because the fully entangled fraction is just uh, a maximization over the overlap with respect to maximum entangled states. And notice that this term here is orthogonal to this term here. So if I take the overlap with respect to this, then I already get a fully entangled fraction of at least Q. So if Q is larger than one over D, then I'm done, okay? In fact, for D larger than equals to four, you can show that, I mean, we have shown that it's useful for teleportations for the entire interval. And that leaves us with uh, the Q trait and the qubit cases. And in those cases, we show that it is already useful for teleportations if and only if Q is larger than one over D. So this green, bits here, they are already useful, okay? These bits here, they were initially useless. But if you take a filter, in this case, you just need to do filtering on Alice sites. Uh, again, with some kind of diagonal filters, kappa here is just some parameter that depends on both Q and, uh, and the dimension D. Okay, details are not too important. Then you can actually activate uh, the teleportation power of all these states here, okay? So that is for the theoretical aspects of that. Any questions? Okay, not let me move on to the experiment, right? So we have, I mean, by that I mean my collaborators in China, they have done the experiments and they have implemented, uh, they have, we have done a proof of principle demonstration uh, for these activations uh, for exactly this family of states uh, in a qubit case, okay? So here's the setup and, um, I walk you through the, the, the main components of that and, and, and try to explain some of this. Okay, so we have photon source, uh, which uh, in real life looks like this. Um, so the photon source is um, ultraviolet uh, diode lasers operating at 405 nanometers. So we have the photons going through uh, this optical components and entering this uh, Sarnia interferometers here. And what happens is that you have this uh, PBKTP crystal, as you also heard in the last uh, talk, that is pumped from both directions. Okay, it's kind of difficult to operate this. So you have the photons going in this direction and also photons going in that direction. So it's pumped from both directions. And uh, you can show um, that uh, with this process, uh, if you start with single photons, for example, then you every now and then end up with the productions of uh, two photons. Uh, that are entangled in the polarization degrees of freedom. So we end up with uh, HV plus VH, okay, at least in the ideal scenario. So then one of these photons is uh, put into this fiber, sent to Alice, and the other photon is put into this fiber and then sent to Bob, okay? So over here we have this noisy channel, which is meant to prepare uh, the two qubit states that I told you, okay? So we have, uh, remember that this, this state uh, is a uh, one parameter family of states. So we have in the experiments prepare 10 different values of this state, okay? So this Q here uh, is controlled by uh, changing this angle of this half wave plates, okay? So the connection is, is as such, if you care, okay? So by, by changing the values of these uh, angles, then we can change the values of Q, and by changing the values of Q, we prepare different uh, states uh, for different values of Q, okay? So let me also point out that um, here, this process is also lossy. So in order to prepare this, we actually have to sacrifice some of these photons. And depending on the values of Q, sometimes you have to sacrifice more, okay? But what happens is that here, we have a beam displacer, uh, which is like the uh, polarization beam splitters, but in the path degrees of freedom. So here we are post-selecting on photons exiting from this output port. Uh, 
And if we do that, then we basically end up with uh, this state. If the state that enters here is, is HV plus VH. Okay. All right. So, so that takes care of the preparation of the initial states. And then we put it to the filter. And again, the filter is controllable, again, by changing this angle of the halfway plate here. So that allows us to tune the parameter kappa that I have in the, in, in the last slides for the filtering operations. Okay. So after that, we can then uh, bring this uh, photon into this bit here where we do the state preparations uh, for the teleportation experiment. But here's an important point that I would like to uh, explain a bit, which is that in a teleportation experiment, you will need at least three qubits. Okay, that's what, that would be the simplest possibility. But here we only have two photons, so how do we do teleportations? So what we actually do is that at this point, we first convert the polarization, polarization entanglement between the two photons into polarization and path entanglement uh, between the two photons. Okay, and in the process, we free out the polarization degrees of freedom of this photon. And then the state preparation is done at the polarization degree of freedom of this photon. Okay, so then that allows us to set up these three qubit systems. And then when it enters here, then we perform the bell state measurement. And in this case, the bell state measurement will be easy because in this case, it's the bell state measurements between the polarization and the path degrees of freedom of the same photon. Okay. I mean, the, usually if you think about bell state measurement, let's say for two photons, it's very difficult, it's non deterministic, and so on. Right. But here, this allows us to bypass that kind of problem. And at least that allows us a complete teleportation protocol. Okay. So let me now uh, move on to show you the results. But before that, let me uh, try to represent the same thing, but using a different schematic diagram, emphasizing the different stages of the experiment. So here is the initial preparations of the uh, photons entangled in polarization degree of freedom. And then this is uh, after the rate bit, we have prepared the states Q uh, theta, sorry, row Q, okay? Where Q is a function of theta one. Okay, so in order to perform an experimental demonstration of this phenomenon, what do you need to do? So one way of doing that is to say that we perform tomographic experiments of the photons. Okay, tomography here and tomography here to work out what the uh, quantum states of the photons is. And then we compute this, the fully entangled fraction. And if it's less than one over D, in this case, one over two, then we know that it's useless, okay? And afterwards, you wanted to show activation. So you wanted to show that after the filtering, it actually beats this threshold, okay? And of course, for that matter, you don't do measurements here any longer, but you let the photon go through, okay? Rather, you perform the tomographic measurements here and here, okay? So then in this case, I mean, by the very nature of, of this experiments, you know that you are looking at the filter states because if, if the filtering is unsuccessful, there will be nothing here. Okay, so we're looking at the filter state, and if the filter state shows that this is true, then you would be exhibiting um, that this is now useful for teleportations. Okay, and because it was initially useless and later on it was useful, so uh, you have shown an activation. Okay, so this is what we have in the, uh, from the experiment. Okay, so on the horizontal axis here, well, I have this parameter Q, and we have uh, 10. Uh, data points, okay, corresponding to the, the 10 different setups uh, uh, of the values of Q. And what is important to note is that, uh, so sorry, I should also mention that, so on the vertical axis, I have the fully entangled fractions uh, for, for, for qubits. And the horizontal line here, the horizontal line here just marks the classical threshold. So initially, meaning um, just after the noisy channel, okay, but before filtering, you see that as long as Q is, let's say, more or less uh, below one half, it is all below this horizontal line. So it was initially below the classical threshold, it was useless. But after the filtering, you see that um, we end up with points that are above the threshold, okay, except for, for this region here. Um, I think the problem over there is that the count rate was too low. Okay, so you also see that we have much larger error bars. Okay, um, right. But maybe for some of you, this is not good enough because you say that, well, you have shown to me that in principle, the state is useful for teleportation, but you didn't do the teleportation. At least from this experimental results, you didn't do that. I mean, you just show that in principle, it is useful. 
Indeed, this is a valid criticism. Therefore, we also did the teleportation itself. So of course, for that matter, you don't do these uh, tomographic measurements, but rather you let the photons go straight through, um, okay? And complete the teleportation experiment, okay? So of course, in this case, you don't look at the fully entangled fractions because you want to use it to complete the teleportation protocol. So what do you do? So I told you at the beginning that there's this teleportation fidelity, which is a figure of merit that you get when you average over all this uh, fidelity, uh, sorry, when you compute the fidelity of the input outputs uh, respect to an average over all possible choices of the pure states. So that, as I say, that sounds like a difficult thing to do, but in experiments, it turns out that it's very easy to access, which is kind of strange, I have to say, as a theory. So, so the teleportation fidelity is something that you can, uh, you can show to be related to what is called this uh, process fidelity, okay? So if you're interested, you can look into the book by Nielsen and Chong. This particular section tells you all about these things. So ideally in the teleportation channel, what you get is an identity channel because you want an input state and the output state to look exactly the same, right? After this unitary correction and so on. So therefore in this case, this so-called process matrix for the ideal, uh, uh, for the ideal channel is just a diagonal matrix that is everywhere zero except for the upper left corner when you write that in the basis of the identity and the Pauli X, Y, and Z, okay? Um, there's also the experimental process matrix that's relevant. And in this case, it turns out that this is something that you can uh, uh, estimate from the data if you do tomographic experiments of the output states, okay? And also by considering an input states to the teleportation channel, which is tomographically complete. So in particular, you can take the input state as the horizontally polarized uh, photons, the vertically polarized photons, and the H plus V and the H minus IV. So once you have that, then you go through some classical post-processing, you can work out this chi experiments, and that will allow you to work out this process fidelity, which you can then put into this to work out the teleportation fidelity, okay? Right, so here are the results. Oh, sorry, there's a point that I forgot to mention, which is that, of course, if I really wanted to do this uh, uh, for the one for the unfiltered case, then of course, I should actually not put the filters here, but let the photon go through to complete the teleportation experiment. Okay, so here's what I get. Um, so again, this is the line for the classical threshold, the horizontal line of two thirds here, and before the experiment, sorry, before filtering, you find that they were all below uh, this classical threshold, okay, more or less uh, it crossed at Q equals to one half. And after the filtering operations, you find that you end up with data that is above the horizontal line. So, okay, therefore in this case showing uh, the activation of the teleportation power. Okay, so since it has been a long day, let me conclude by saying that um, we have revisited or investigated this problem of activating the teleportation power of entangled quantum states uh, hidden in certain quantum states. Okay, again, let me remind that this just means mathematically as follows. You have some quantum states initially uh, being used as certified by uh, satisfying this inequality. And if you could find future such that afterwards um, you, you could actually beat the classical threshold, then you would show activation of teleportation power. So in theory, we have shown that uh, for all dimensions uh, three and above, the teleportation power of Werner states um, in this interval um, can be activated. Okay, I mean, of course, first we have to show that it was useless initially. And on the other hand, we also show that uh, for all dimensions, this entire family of this rank deficient states, this rank two states that I told you just now, uh, either they are useful or you can show that the yeah, teleportation power can be activated. Okay, so experimentally, we have also done a proof of principle demonstration of this fact using this two qubit family of the states. Okay, so what about the future? So I only told you the good things. So let me tell you the imperfections that we have. Um, okay, so for example, it would be good if we can do a more convincing experimental demonstration. So one of these shortcomings in our work is that we only use two physical qubits rather than three. Okay, so maybe you want to do this with three physical qubits, so three photons, but that will be quite challenging. 
um, so that in particular, you, you could actually have the third party to bring in a third photon there and then do this preparations. In some sense, this can also be done in our setup because as I said just now, this state preparation is something that can be done by just uh, changing this different combination of wave plates after you convert to path and uh, polarization entanglement. So you could just say, well, have this part blocked up by a, a, and, and make it accessible to a third guy who comes in to put whatever combination of wave plates as he likes. Okay, in principle, this can be done. Okay, I mean, we didn't do it, but in principle, this can be done. One other imperfection that I didn't tell you is that we didn't do a full bell state measurement, even though the setup in principle allows us to do that. And the reason for that is, uh, is a question of, uh, um, of, of financial issues. So we're limited by the number of detectors that we have. So we have to do with you know, less detectors and therefore we can only do a partial bell state measurements. Okay. And there was one more imperfection in the setup, which is that despite what I show you in the diagram, we didn't do what is normally done in a, a usual teleportation experiment, which is that you do this classical communication and then you material corrections. We didn't do that. So rather what happens is that on, on, on Bob's side, we just do whatever unitary is randomly and then we post select on the data. Okay, so well, if you believe in the theory, it doesn't matter too much anyway. Okay, so theoretically, there are also things that are that that one can try to think a bit more. For example, it would be useful to understand the connections better, uh, uh, better understand the connections between distillability and this possibility to activate teleportation power. Okay, in particular, this threshold that we found for Werner states actually coincides with the uh, one distillability threshold for Werner states. Okay. Um, one can of course also ask in this in connection to this what happens if you allow filtering on multiple copies of the states and and also out of curiosity i should also say that I, i'm always curious about this what happens if you do other kinds of measurements rather than bell state measurements because that is like the default thing that you do when you think about teleportation protocol but maybe there's something else that could be at least in some case better and so on okay with that i think i should end so thanks very much uh, for your attention and thanks very much for staying to the very very end of this meeting okay Okay, thanks. So, so the hidden teleportation power, is it a quantity that you can in principle calculate for any state or like you can plug in a computer and do some like brute force, brute force search and then spit out a number to say? Um, I would say, um, um, no, not quite. So there are a few issues, right? So firstly, if you wanted to say, if I, if, if you just give me, let's say I'm the oracle that you want to ask, right? So you give me, you write down on a piece of paper, a density matrix, you ask me, okay, does this have hidden teleportation power? I would say, well, wait, I have to do the computation. So what do I have to do? So firstly, I have to check the fully entangled fraction of the states. This is in principle doable, okay? but under the assumption that when I do these optimizations, I found the global optimum, okay? But maybe I could somehow uh, show that, at least in, in our case, in some instances, we can show this analytically. But in general, especially for higher dimensional states, the, the, the number of parameters is just too large. So to show this analytically that uh, this is useless, this is not trivial, I would say. So in general, not really possible, I would say. So this is, the first level of the problem. The second level of problem is that you need to find a good filters. And of course, the way we have done it is that we perform numerical optimizations to find the filters. But if you fail to find anything useful, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. It could mean that you're just unlucky or maybe you need to look uh, for a longer period of time. So in that sense, I would say, uh, well, in some sense, in principle, yes, but in practice, um, maybe too difficult. So in addition to the filtering, but for, for me, it's something like a postal solution. But in some sense, uh, it looks like a, by, instead of the filtering, uh, by, by uh, NCLA state, you can do the same thing. 
Well, what do you mean? Uh, what, you you mean? add one more ancilla state and do the post oscillation to partial trace the ancilla state, and then. Well, I mean, here, mm -hmm. I mean, f filtering, at least theoretically, is just described by a matrix. A filter is described by a matrix. As to how you wanted to implement this 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 filtering, I mean, you can do it using ancilla, whatever. You can do it by by a partial me measurement, let's say, or you can do it by whatever, you know. As long as, I mean, if you like, basically uh, a local filtering operation just corresponds to uh, a stochastic local operations. Okay, so it's like you do uh, a CP map that is not trace preserving, sometimes it fails, but you keep all those instances where it passed and they are the good instances. Okay. Yes. No more question? Okay, that thanks, Yong Chen. Okay. Thanks very much. Uh, on behalf of the organization.